day, Summer Rain Oaks was walking to the oak tree to put some bird feeders up. As she heard a sound of munching. Yeah, audible, very audible munching. Um, it's what is pretty that crazy. Sound? Because in the beginning of the year when we got here in the fall, we saw some egg masses on the oak trees and it happened to be gypsy moths. They're an invasive, they're from France actually. They were brought in by accident. Well, no, I, I think that kind of on purpose because I think a, a dude thought they could be um, crossed with a, a silk moth and he could make a more superior silk moth and then they escaped into the wild. I think it was in Massachusetts and then they you know, basically flooded the United States and in certain years, they proliferate and they start to defoliate. And this is actually one of the bad years. And I was under this tree, this oak tree. This is actually a very special tree that came from Liberty Hyde Bailey. I don't know what kind of oak it is. It looks like some type of white oak, um, a not native species, but. Look, here's one. Yes, and so they're starting to pupate actually. You can see the little silk that they're doing here. Which means they'll form. Into a moth. Those... Yeah, chrysalis and then they'll form okay. into a moth. And um, I don't hear much munching now because we heard of a technique from our friend Mike, who's uh, our resident forester who came in and did a forest tour with us. And he said, you need some type of burlap. We basically created this like belt, as you could see here. Actually, and, it looks like it's not working that well. <laughs> I know, some of, them, some of them have gotten up, but you could see as how many are actually down here and also it's all that dark. are Let's see. that are kind of dead around the, the base of this oak. And I think we're able to get this tree in time. I mean, it's really hard to knock them off. We've been using really sharp sprays of water to knock them off. And then we have a, um, a very light soap solution for basically using one part Dr. Bronner's to five parts water and we're spraying that on them and that basically gets into their uh, spiracles which is how they breathe and then they just suffocate so you can see probably some of these on the ground were you know have we're not able to actually crawl up above this um, more or less but unfortunately if I take you over here you'll see that some trees didn't fare so well and I left for a week and this beach had leaves and now this beach doesn't have any leaves. So we're hoping that by knocking them off that this uh, beach will bud out again this year. But there's one right here that escaped the ra our wrath. How dare you. It's a small one. The small ones are hard to find. Yeah, they look like twigs. Um, you have to really look closely. This one's a little easier to see because it's uh, smaller. But then we have this beautiful weeping fountain beach that you probably saw during our spring tour. And that is completely defoliated. And then they started to work on this Acer over here, which is but another Japanese maple. It has new buds on it, which means that there's probably going to be new leaves coming out soon, right? I am hoping. I'm hoping that there's going to be a second, a second wave of leaves. Right. So this one we saved in time, I believe. We got a lot of damage here, but you could see them here at the bottom. They're all just kind of standing in line, waiting, trying to get up here, but they can't because we've made this weird contraption of cardboard and towels to prevent them from being able to get up in the in the tree. Yeah, which we're going to show you. Saunders been taking the yeah, lead. Yeah, so there's on a, this. there's another tree over there that they're munching on. So let's go and uh, create a contraption for that. Yeah. So and then knock them off the tree. So here, I'll give the camera to you. Yeah. You just need to create. Uh, a border that they can't cross. You saw on the big oak that that was kind of a, a 1.0 version. The other maple, is it a maple? Yeah, that's a maple. That one has a better protection. So what I do is uh, we have these uh, plant pots. It's They're like cocoa fiber. Cocoa fiber. So I put this on the tree bark so it makes a good seal so they can't sneak in there. Uh, and then we use some cardboard, which I'll get. And then I cut a long strip out of it. Uh, just make sure you cut it in the direction so that this bends really easily. Otherwise, trying to bend the cardboard the other way, it's not so easy. Ta -da. So now we have all these strips. Uh, the third piece I use is uh, old plant pots. Uh, I just cut them in half and cut the top off. And then 
what that does is it you could throw this around the bark and then it creates this really difficult edge for them to climb on so it's hard to pass this and then especially if we start wrapping this cardboard around it it just kind of offsets it from this tree bark and then maybe some duct tape and then hopefully that will be a good seal so let's try that out you can see that this is uh, already pretty defoliated here. Oh yeah, and look at this mass of... Oh, this is gross. This yeah. is grotesque. Look it's like just a mass. Oh my god. They clump together and they basically start to form a chrysalis, so they become eventually a moth. Which is the gypsy moth. Let's put this together. I'm not sure if you can come here. Look at this guy. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Once we have this uh, boundary established so that they can't climb up, then we'll knock them off the tree. And there's a couple different ways you could do that. Obviously, you could flick them like I just did. Uh, you can grab a stick and smash them off the tree. Gotta be careful because sometimes they fall on another leaf and or, they'll or catch themselves. Or they can themselves. fall on you like Sander. Or up. they'll fall on me. Look, and Look up. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've definitely fallen on me and I'm like, what is this? And they got these really itchy hairs. If they prick you a little bit, you have uh, it, it irritates the skin. The, other, the third method is using a hose. So you use a very sharp spray, summer's favorite method, and you just like hit them and they'll just go flying. <laughs> Which is really funny. But what's crazy uh, is that they will flock back to the tree. Yeah. And yeah, um, this big migration back to the tree, and that's why we're making this boundary here. I'm not sure if I have enough hands to do this. Oh, I might have to help you, but in the meantime, there's one right on your back. Oh, man. There you go. Ah. Got it. Hold that, too. Basically creating a belt for the tree. A tree belt. Okay, let me try to... And it's just at the um, kind of tail end of June, and... They're starting to make a chrysalis now and they only have one basically brood a year, which is lucky for us because sometimes you get like a fall webworm or whatever, which comes out in spring and fall. And then they can defoliate the tree twice in a year, but with gypsy moths, they only come out once a year. So that's why we're hoping that the tree will bud again. Um, but, you know, we want to basically protect the tree because there's still young ones out there that are nibbling. And if we could get them off, then all the better. So make sure that doesn't come off. Yep, that's pretty good. Really and then tight. we'll use some tape. You could also just use burlap or, you know, if you have like big chicken feet or grain bags, you could use that. Um, you know, we're just basically using what we have, which is like leftover planter nursery pots and cardboard. Yeah. So whatever really works. If you're hanging out with summer rain, then you gotta, the most materials you're able to work with is always plant, plant pots, pots <laughs> coconut and, plant pots, and, and cardboard from the boxes that the plants came in. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, there's many ways to do this, but the ultimate test is just to see if they're able to get back up on the tree, and if not, then uh, it worked. Let's get out of here. This tree is really short, makes it really difficult. Yeah. Okay. So this works really well. It's just a stick for stirring some paint. And you could just uh, smack them like that and they'll fall on the ground real quick. Or you can actually like peel them off. But up there, that's really hard to reach. Right. So another method is using the spray bottle actually. I before. can't believe how much this has gotten defoliated yeah, really looking crazy. at it now. So this is that mixture of uh, Dr. Bronner soap, one fifth of the solution is Dr. Bronner soap, the rest is water. You just spray them. And it takes a little while, but they don't like it. They really don't like it. Right, and this is a really cool way too. I'm gonna stand back. So we have the hose and you just put it on the sharp spray. So it makes one line and it gets pretty far. And what I like to do is uh, I just kind of rough, like shake the leaf like this. Sometimes I don't even know where they are but I just see little black lines <laughs> flying away in the distance. So, you know, the idea is just to shake the leaves as much as you can, and they'll have a really hard time holding on. And the closer you are, obviously, the harder your spray is gonna be.
Uh, well, there, do you see any sign on this tree of more leaves coming out? Or? Yeah, there's definitely some buds. So this tree will probably pull through. I'm hoping so. Because what happens if, 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 what happens if a tree gets defoliated summer in the early spring and it, it doesn't have an ability to put on more leaves? What happens? Then it doesn't have food and it can't store energy through the right. winter and it becomes weaker and weaker. Which makes it more susceptible to pests. In the future. In the future. Yeah. So. And it might, know. and actually even the pests might, you know, nip at the um, terminal ends and might create like a weird structure in the tree and. Uh, so you yeah. get growth defects. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes specific insects carry viruses and then that could cause a vi viral disease in the tree itself. Look at these guys right there. Which one of these? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. You almost imagine? like have to hit the tree at every angle because now they're going just back in the tree, huh? Because it's they're you know, the branch is round and you hit it at like you said yeah. at a ninety degree and on one side but not on the other. So this takes a couple of days, like you'll have to come back tomorrow and there'll be more and then the next day there will be more. But they won't but, be able to get back up into the tree because of that yeah. belt that we created. So once you knock them off, they should get off there. And oftentimes oh, yeah. when they start to come back up on the tree base, that's when we start to spray them with soap because then it's like a, a giant oh, yeah. Good point. massacre of gypsy moths. So yeah, if you want to get as much, you want to take as much of them out at once, it's a good idea to let them uh, get to the base of the tree. This is how we're dealing with the gypsy moth for some of the special trees that are here. You can't obviously do this to every tree, but some of these trees might need a little extra help, especially the younger trees. You know, the bigger trees, they'll survive. I saw this huge hickory down there, and it has those moths on it, but it will probably pull through. But a short tree like this needs a little help.